Hey, it's Kevin. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, okay, what are the best hats for rain? The best hats for rain are going to be rain hats, which are generally cheap. Generally, if you can afford to buy a second hat, that's a little cheap. They have stuff called rain hats, which generally are kind of like a, like a poplin rain coat, you know, but a hat version, but they don't look that good. That's the thing. They look like, you know, an old-fashioned rain coat, rain hat kind of thing. So, a lot of people want to wear their felts. The felts are technically, they're waterproofed and everything. They're rainproof, but they can lose their shape, like, massively, which is basically, yeah. Okay, it held the rain, but, you know, it looks like horrible the next day. So, is that really waterproof? Yeah. Dress hats, fedoras, they're not really meant to be worn as rain hats. They'll take some rain, you know, if you get some sprinkle and stuff, leave your brim up, okay, it's stronger up, even if you're a down guy, just leave it up, when you get home, hang it, or just flip it with that brim snapped up, okay, you want that curve to remain, preserve the curve, upside down like this, snapped back up, okay, even when you're walking home, leave the brim up, don't worry if it's pooling in there, it doesn't matter, it's better, okay, uh, not the worst thing to walk on like this though but just when you get home snap it up let it dry that way away from heat you're fine but which hats are going to do a little better than others okay i'm going to say like straight off the bat fedoras nah, doesn't matter how good they are or whatever you know some of them are going to do good some are not going to do well some will do very well some will be perfect some not some will be perfect for a while, then all of a sudden break down. Um, it's unpredictable and it's risky. Uh, the only things I will say that are full out, let's go for it, uh, Western hats, but I'm talking real Western hats, not an open road. Uh, maybe an old, older, older open road, but even still, those are closer to fedoras. Uh, the new stuff is very thin and very hard and it's not the same felt as like a let's say a 6x rancher or a tycoon or a shasta or any of those 6x 10x whatever uh full out western hats and you know what i'm talking about it's a stetson western catalog um, any of that stuff the stetsons resistals uh charlie one horse if, if it's usually 6x and up now it's good for a felt it used to be 4x but now they're doing all kinds of stuff they always have a sort of a budget line they did this line that line for budget felt dyna felt this felt that felt um the newest thing that really has caught on is their buffalo collection which they're classifying as like a 4x or so i don't know 3x 4x 5x so the 4x and up being fur felt is not applying anymore. It used to be that. That was the line. Anything four and up used to be fur felt for Stetson, but no more. So a four can be a blend. When they say buffalo, it's it's a wool and fur blend, basically. Um, the amount of buffalo, I don't know if there's much in there, but it's essentially yeah, not made of buffalo. It's maybe got some in there or something, but uh, these are wool, wool and fur blends. So as long as they have some fur in there, it's considered a wool fur blend. So uh, some of them are very rugged, they're thick, they'll be fine. Um, but again, the fur felt stuff is going to do better. Fur felt westerns, they're very thick. The only non-western hats that I'm going to say are super consistent generally are a Kubra. I've only heard one complaint. Um, in the 25 years I'm here, you know, of somebody saying that a crown shrunk, but um, that's one, I've never seen a single you know customer come in with a, a bad one. They tend to not even like lose their shape, and sometimes guys want to age their Akubras and they just don't get old. So uh, most of the Akubra stuff, you know, especially the heaviest stuff like the Western stuff, like uh, Snowy Rivers. Riverinas, things that are of the heavier nature are going to be super durable. And then the dressier stuff like the Style Masters, etc., they'll also be very rugged as far as dress hats go. Um, they'll be your best bet. Or just get yourself one of your cheaper hats or your older hats that you don't care if the brim gets a little out of whack. You know, that's 
generally what I do. I have a hierarchy. I have my three favorite hats, you know, or my four or five favorite hats that I don't really like to get wet. Um, then I have my other hats, like, okay, yeah, it gets wet, that's not a big deal. And then I have hats that are just totally like, you know, I consider them like, let's get them messed up. I kind of want to get them messed up, you know, let's rain on them. Right? So think about that. That's more important, I think. But uh, moving up to beaver and stuff like that is not going to make it more waterproof. It'll probably get you a little more longevity because uh, we'll be able to reshape your hat very, very, very well, um, very reliably, uh, efficiently, and almost indefinitely, um, the better the felt, you know. Um, wool felt, stuff with wool tends to break down because it shrinks when you bring the wet hat into your house. It shrinks very slowly. Um, radiator blasting heat, wet hat. The wool content shrinks quicker, the fur content very slowly, but also shrinks. You know, it'll take a decade or two for that to shrink, but they all shrink. Um, and it's all because of heat. So keep it in a cool place in your house and you'll be better off, um, definitely. Um, it's not really the felt that screws it up. It's more like human error because we bring them into our warm environments on cold days while they're wet. And it's kind of like throwing a wet sweater into the dryer, hot dryer, you know. That's the effect you're giving it. Um, so yeah, a lot of it is the way you handle it, but longevity is what you're gonna get with the beaver stuff. You're also gonna get, you know, nice fit. It's gonna be very soft and, you know, break in nicely and the texture, and, you know, everything will look nicer. It'll feel nicer. Um, rainproofing spray, that's, you know, sometimes I give my hats like a tiny misting of hairspray for stiffening and I think that also helps it. Um, I don't know what to say about that. I've never really done it. Um, you can try, I would say, try a sample on your brim if you're going into a very hairy situation or if you know you will the next day or something. Otherwise, mm, it's usually not necessary. Um, I don't know about that. So, yeah, Scotch Guard and stuff like that. Um, the only way it could probably hurt is that it'll make speckles and spots that so it work you know, the color might. So, keep it very misty, spray it in the air, do a test on the underside or someplace inconspicuous first. And I would say do very thin, almost airy coats. Um, let them dry, and anything you're spraying on your hat, you have to dust the hat. Get packing tape and dust it very, very, very well. Get every speck of dust before you spray. Um, I'll use hairspray. I think it's the same thing. It's kind of like a little plastic coating that you put on it and stuff. Um, it helps to, uh, you know, give you some body so that you can steam the hat well. What happens is it makes that little coating. The steam will kind of melt it for a second, and then it hardens up again. That's what hat stiffener does, so works like that. Um, I would say if it's not broke, don't fix it. Don't go spraying stuff on it or steaming it if it's not needed. Just don't play around with it and start changing shapes and steaming and pinching. The more you mess up your hat, I mean the more you mess with your hat, the more you're going to mess it up. So um, steam as little as possible. Try not to steam, you know, at all if you can. You know, just use a brush, use your hand and stuff. Um, stretching, you know how I feel about that. I don't really believe in stretching. Always go big so you can tighten up. Um, if I have to do an extreme stretch for me, I won't do it. I'll just remove the sweatband from inside. I feel like just taking the leather band will give you the most room of any stretch and it holds it and doesn't make anything on the outside look horrible. Just the inside looks a little raw, you know, but uh, big deal. The outside will look perfect and uh, the inside, you, you know, nobody sees it. So, you know, oh yeah, well, I got a stretch you know, my hat looks like this now, but uh, I still got that sweatband inside. It looks, you know, oh well, it's cracked. You cracked it from stretching. You know, it never works. Stretching is just such an abomination and uh, I recommend just keeping your sizes a little big. Uh, get some padding. That's about it. Um, 
fixed my pedal board, so um, I will be ready in 15 minutes. What? 15 more minutes. I'm making a video. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, that's about it. I'm going to say again, try to go big. Um, if you can, never go tight. Uh, if you're in doubt, just go up to that next size and get some padding and you'll be happier uh, that you can adjust your head and you've got a little wiggle room. I feel good having a little padding in there because I know I've got the wiggle room to go bigger or smaller that way. When there's no padding in there, you know, if my hair is bigger that day and I need a, you know, a little different fit, I can't get it. So I always feel better going slightly bigger if possible. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a nice gallery and stuff, but for now it's leaning on the amp. Thanks very, very much to uh, Daisy for the beautiful mahogany uke. It's gorgeous. The woodworking feels so amazing. And the uh, nylon strings were just so nice. I love the feeling. Thank mm -hmm. you. 